Good morning. You have tuned in to Just the Facts. I have in the studio today my guest, Becky Hall, who is running for the 1st District City Council in Duluth, Minnesota. Welcome, Becky. Thanks for having me. Nice to have you here. Yeah. Becky, I've known you for many years. Mm -hmm. Uh, You've been involved in the community quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But I'd like you to tell the viewers a little bit about why you're running for the 1st District, uh, a little bit about your um, background and why you think you would be the best candidate for District 1. Okay. Well, I live out in Lakeside with my husband, Pat. We've raised five kids out there. Um, uh, for We've lived here for over 17 years, and it's been a great place to raise a family. And four of those five kids now are now young adults and living elsewhere. It'd be great to um, one day have them come back to Duluth. Um, I, uh, they would love to come back here and raise families of their own, uh, one day and uh, you know the reason why I, I I get involved in running for City Council and this isn't the the first time I 10 12 years ago I ran as well it's interesting how the issues haven't changed much over the last um, decade yet and same leadership as well um, for me I would like to be a city councilor that fights for a community um, that is the safest most affordable and opportunity-filled place to raise our families. Um, I sure would love to see those kids of mine and other families, their kids, to grow up here and find opportunity to stay here and raise those families. So I've been out um, the last several weeks out door knocking already, and it's it's terrific just meeting with um, my neighbors and hearing what issues matter the most to them and it's public safety, it's affordability, it's you know keeping our taxes at a reasonable rate so they can stay in their homes, and opportunities in this community, um, supporting our, our local businesses so they can create the jobs so our, our families can support themselves. So my um, campaign is very simple. My theme is families first and second, issues that matters to, fa- to our families in Duluth. Um, I, want, I would like to see city government just get back to the basics of um, make, ensuring that we have um, a good, strong um, police and fire protection. Public safety tends to be the number one topic of conversation out in District 1 where I'm door knocking. And um, you know, just being able to afford to stay in your home um, and have jobs for our families. So it sounds to me like um economic opportunity would maybe bring young people like your own yeah. back to this area and some others as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, what experience have you had in the past uh, dealing with economics? And uh, I believe we talked about how you felt that the economic situation in Duluth hasn't really changed for the better yeah. in over 20 years. Yeah, you know, uh, in my professional world, I worked in economic development. I worked for the state of Minnesota. And my job was to travel the state, work with communities and businesses to foster um, job creation. That was our number one goal. And I look at Duluth as having wonderful potential. It really does, folks, um, for, for business here in Duluth. But unfortunately... When I worked for the state of Minnesota, um, Duluth, even back then, and I still think it it exists today, has a reputation of not being business friendly. And how unfortunate for that. And in the last year or so, um, as I, I'm always following city council, what's going on there. But some of our recent policies that have been passed by our council, the earn sick and safe time, the um, banning the the flavored um, tobacco, um, those, types of policies imposed by our city council harm our, our local businesses. Um, I, I, I think we need to change our reputation. I think we can do it with the right kind of leadership. And I would like to take that economic development leadership that I've, I've gained through my um, profession and, and support our, our businesses here locally. Well, I think that's a great goal. Yeah. And I would hope that, um, this election proves to be a change, uh, especially in first district, but in other districts as well, because I've lived here all my life. Mm-hmm. 
and I have seen our city go backwards, not forward, and it's more than 20 years. Yeah. We used to have a lot of industry here. It seems the focus is more on uh, tourism, and that does not bring uh, sustainable uh, income for people raising families right. or even supporting oneself yeah. when you consider the high cost of living yeah. that we keep seeing additional taxes and fees go on businesses. I own a business. I would not own a business in the city of Duluth with the, with the climate the way it is right now. I, I have a business out in the Rice Lake City. Mm -hmm. And uh, I looked into things in the area of the city, and I just refuse to have all of that uh, yeah. extra expense. I, I, I think our city of Duluth could do a much better job of supporting local businesses and, you know, um, eliminating the the red tape and the regulations to start up businesses not imposing um regulations on businesses like earn sick and safe you know companies they they take care of their employees if they want good employees they're gonna provide the benefits and and the opportunities to to keep those good employees we don't need a city government trying to run our local businesses um, i just as i said earlier i think there's great potential for them to grow here we just need leadership in city government that stands behind them and supports them. And I don't see that right now on the city council. I think that I think our city council makes it difficult, as you as you mentioned, too. Um, boy, I, I admire the folks who keep their doors open in this community under these circumstances. And again, I'd like to um, be one city councilor that um, my door is open to them as well as everybody is. What can we do to be a better city? to support our families, so. Well, you know, we've got uh, higher education institutions here that, that have uh, invested large amounts of money and we turn out students um, from all parts of the world mm -hmm. as well as uh, the st Minnesota and, and even other states. And so that resource, those young people are not staying here once they get that education. Yeah. They'd like to, but the opportunities like we're talking about are just not available. They're, the potential is there. Mm -hmm. not there there. Is. So when you've talked with these uh, neighbors and people in First District, um, when they talk about um, um, safety issues, why does that seem to be such a concern? I. I live in the country, so I don't have to deal with that type yeah. of thing. I don't really know that much about it. Can you yeah, well, you know, it's it's interesting as I talk to folks, and even I'm on this, um, um, on my iPhone, I have an app. It's called Nextdoor. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's like an electronic neighborhood watch. And neighbors are constantly talking about all kinds of things. Um, you know, where's the best place to, you know, have lunch? which I think is New London Cafe in Lakeside. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite restaurant. But, but the biggest conversation on, on uh, that app is um, public safety. And there's a lot of, um, you know, we hear about break-ins, even home intruders in, our, in, our, in District 1, um, car prowls. Um, so I think folks out there are very concerned about, you know, do we, are we, do we have a police force that's strong enough to, to protect us? And, you know, again, I, I look back on some of the decisions made with our city council and one where um, the police just needed protective gear. And that was a battle to give them the, the resources and the equipment they need to do their job. And so um, as a, if I'm fortunate enough to be a city councilor, I will firmly stand behind our police force um, and give them an, allow them the resources and equipment to do their job because they stand firmly in front of us to protect us. So, you know, I think our neighbors out in District 1 are very concerned that, um, you know, it, we just need, we just want to be safe in our, in our neighborhoods and that, it, that requires supporting our police. So I, that's number one. <clears throat> I found that, I didn't read it, pay attention a lot to it, but I heard enough about it. I found that quite appalling to for the city council not to back the police force with protection gear, I could, <laughs> I'm still scratching my head. Yeah. It's like, okay, we're controlling businesses and we're controlling uh, some of the things people do uh, with some of the choices they make from purchases. 
and then we're not giving the police enough right. gear. It, you know, and it's, as a, it, as a, a resident seems... of Duluth, it's, it's unsettling. We should yes. be, you know, standing behind our police and supporting them in anything they need. They have a tough job to do. And um, that is a, a huge role for city government that we shouldn't be shirking and, and diminishing. I quite frankly understand it to be one of the primary key roles. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Police and fire protection. You know, that's and the right. infrastructure. Uh, you know, and, and that's the second thing that I hear about because, again, I'm running for city council because I want city government to get back to the basics of, of what its job is in our community, and that's public safety infrastructure. Now, as you know, we've our community passed that, that sales tax to finally fix our streets. And, you know, I was just out yesterday talking to a neighbor when I was door knocking, and I was saying how this isn't the first time I've run for city council. 10, 12 years ago, I ran for city council as well. And like I mentioned earlier, some of the issues haven't changed. Back then, we were talking about fixing the streets. And back then, we had the, um, the community investment trust fund that was being financed by the casino revenues, which we no longer have. But I remember back then, uh, the conversation coming up, fix our streets. We have the, the funding for it. And it seemed like with that trust fund, um, our council, our leadership wanted to use that trust fund for everything. I remember people, candidates running back then saying housing is infrastructure. So, you know, the, the finances were going for everything but the streets. And here we are now, 12 years later, the same issue is here. But now we have another opportunity, and that's the sales tax to finally fix our streets. And as I talk to our neighbors, they voted for that tax to fix the streets. So as a city councilor, I will ensure that I will watch that those revenues, like a hawk, that they go for the streets and not for other economic development projects, housing projects. Duluthians voted for that, street, that tax to fix their streets. And they have not been fixed because the potholes have steadily gotten bigger and bigger. Earlier in the year, um, traveling up to, um, to uh, Jean Duluth Road, you have to go on Snively Boulevard. The first couple times I made the mistake oh. of forgetting that that was so bad, it was unbelievable. So I started going up Woodland Avenue and up over Oxford. It was unbelievable. I mean, it started out bad and it just continually got worse. Well, mm -hmm. it's been fixed a little bit. Um, but the roads in the county are in such much, much better shape than they are within the city of Duluth. And it's not like Jean Duluth Road and Rice Lake Road are not heavily traveled and Martin Road are not heavily traveled because they are. But the Duluth streets have steadily gotten worse. And when I was out in West Duluth again, I forgot that on this one street, and you don't want to go any more than 25 miles an hour up that street, mm. there is such a dip in that street that you just literally, totally bottom mm. out your car and it has been like that when we owned a building out there. It was like that, and that's over 12 years ago that we owned that building. Mm. Why aren't they not doing anything with very potentially dangerous streets like that? I mean, there is a really serious dip there. Yeah. Well, and out in District 1, uh, East Superior Street, um, just earlier this spring, uh, yes. my friend was coming to my house, coming down East Superior Street, hit a pothole, and blew out her tire. You know... Not fixing the streets is almost like a hidden tax on us Duluthians because we have to get alignments and our tires fixed and maintain our cars as a result of these, these streets. It's time to fix those streets. And, not, and when we talk about infrastructure, I, you know, it's not just resurfacing the street. No. I mean, when we're, when we're going out there and repairing these streets, we really should dig deep because I quite often out where I live in District 1, there's a sewer line that's that's busted open, and so right after we need, they repair the streets. Yes, yeah, so we need to be smart with those those finances when it comes to repairing our streets. And I know it's exciting to say, you know, we're gonna we're gonna fix seven miles of street a year, or whatever the number is. I don't think it's so much how many miles of streets we fix; it's doing it right and fixing the street and what's underneath. Again, that's another role of, of city government, and we need to be doing it right. 
Yes, I, I can uh, agree with you on Superior Street. I quit traveling Superior Street, and that's a loss to the businesses out there. Those business people yeah. do everything they can to get traffic yep. out their way, and yet when the roads are so bad, there are other people like myself yeah. avoid Superior Street. Yeah, we are, we are so fortunate to have in District 1 that wonderful Lakeside Business District, as well as up in Woodland, um, the area up there, and then down by Mount Royal, um, we, you know, we, we, that's another way to support our businesses is just have good streets in front of them as well as our homes. I agree with that. <laughs> um, you were just talking about, um, I, I forgot my train of thought, so excuse me, I'll have to go back. Well, so the other thing that I hear about when I'm out knocking on doors is affordability. And, you know, I, we hear all the time about housing and affordability and, um, you know, I think, when we're talking about affordable housing, I think one of the best ways to be able to afford a home is to have great paying jobs. So we need to be more supportive of our business community. But also when it comes to housing affordability, it's, it's the taxes. And in the last um, decade or so, our taxes are, are really skyrocketing. And um, I'm wondering, I'm curious, are we getting the services that we that we really expect for the amount of money we're paying in property taxes and are we going to continue to have city councilors that just say you know we got to increase taxes again um i, I think we need to have uh some councilors on that council that debate the, debate this issue because as i talk to my neighbors uh, a lot of them are retired and they live on the on fixed incomes I, i'm close to retirement believe it or not and i worry that um are my property taxes going to tax me right out of my home? I know that's a big worry out there as I talk to folks. So, uh, again, I would be a watchdog over those property taxes. We take that seriously, and we shouldn't be just increasing them haphazardly. Well, I think another thing that uh, adds to our problem is we keep building affordable housing for people from all over the United States coming here because, and this is not an issue for uh, city government but it affects city government in the long run is because our county is so acceptable of all people's coming in here and then these people don't have housing so now we're building affordable housing for them and the last time there were candidates running i sat and listened to the councilors that are running again uh, talk about why they needed to be re-elected and then they would put controls on the contractors that were building this affordable housing well there again that's telling a business owner what you can build and how you are going to build it when if you hire that contractor to do the job that should be his choice on how it's built yeah. and not put all of these amenities in there that people can afford their homes are putting into their homes i mean they get dishwashers and they get this and they get that. Mm. We are taxpaying. We're putting money into supporting people who can't support themselves, which adds to the cost of government. And I think that that's something that we really need to look at more carefully. Yeah. Well, and as a, a city councilor, again, um, with my background in economic de development, I really believe that um, we folks can afford housing if we have a good um, job base for for families and support businesses and allow them to create the jobs don't micromanage our local businesses uh, you want the best way to afford a home is to have a, a, a sustainable living wage um, created by our local business owners and um, we need city councilors that support their efforts well I, I, maybe I didn't explain myself too well but okay you can afford your home right now but as long as the taxes increase to afford housing for other people we will not be able to sustain that when our incomes don't go up mm -hmm. it's a vicious cycle but i think the people that are in power right now they don't see that they just want to be good to everybody give everybody everything they can on the backs of those of us that are working hard to provide a decent living and adding to the economic opportunity in this area. That's where I see a big roadblock. They cannot see, 
because they don't have the background. I mean, I'd like to know what some of the, um, besides one being an attorney, I'd like to know which of those uh, counselors actually own a business, see how a business has to be operated to make it economically feasible mm -hmm. to own it. Mm -hmm. Be able and to pay their employees. Pay, and, pay their mm -hmm. employees. And yeah. so I, I do wonder how many of them on there actually have that experience that yeah. they can understand what it takes to make a business go in this area, especially under the burdensome taxes that are heaped upon yeah. us constantly. Yeah. Well, and once again, I, um, I, I really think that our city government, it, it, it's it's difficult to be all things to all people. Um, I think we really do need to get back to the basics, make sure ensuring that we have good public safety, keeping our families safe in their in their neighborhoods, um, that our our infrastructure is sound, streets as well as this our um, um, aged sewer system needs work, and just providing opportunities, supporting our local businesses so that the jobs can be created in order to for, afford housing and keeping taxes um, low so that we can stay in our homes. Um, those are the things I'm gonna focus on as a city councilor. What, um, what is the area? That's what I, I of lost District that train. One? I thought that's my train of thought that I dropped. Yeah. Uh, where is District One? Okay, it's, um, it's precincts one through seven. Um, it's pretty much Eastern Duluth. It's late, the Lakeside, Lester Park neighborhoods, it's Woodland, and it's a little bit of Kenwood and um, some of uh, Mount Royal, that area. Well, you've got quite a bit of area to yeah. cover when you're talking to people, but yeah. it's, it's, all, it's all mostly um, uh, middle income uh, families. Yeah. Some students and stuff are students, in there as well. Um, yeah, uh, just down to earth families, a lot of retirees um, in some of the neighborhoods. So, um, yeah, it, it, you know, I'll tell you something. It's been the best place for my husband and I to raise our, our five kids. And um, I get involved in, in, you know, community projects. I've been on several community boards. Um, one of the first things I did when I moved to Duluth was um, sign up for the Duluth Leadership Program because I wanted to, to understand and learn as much about Duluth as possible. This is the home where I'm raising my kids. And since then, I've done nothing but try to give back to my community. As I, as I mentioned earlier, I've run a couple of times. And, you know, I, I really believe that Duluth has great potential. It's a great place to raise a family. It can be a great place to open up a business, grow a business. You know, we just need the right kind of leadership that's going to support that. And by doing so, we're supporting our families. Um, more more business, more jobs means more tax revenue. Um, just goes right back to the city and it supports everybody. So I, I just want to give in that way and take my economic development experience in that way and, and serve our community for the sake of our families. Well, you know, when I first got on the board at Normana Township, I was running for a supervisor and ended up being the clerk because the clerk decided to quit. <laughs> And um, there was a family, and I'll link it to the attitude of the city council, there was a family that had run the township for years, and they held it in their fist tight, mm. squeezed the life out of the community. And so um, I took a page out of that book. We changed it. We convinced those that weren't part of that family that were now moving in there that to allow the King, um, King development that's off of the uh, Rice Lake Road, I can't think of the whole name on it. Okay. But um, that we need to encourage that plotted land of 50 uh, uh, sites for homes to be developed. Yeah. They fought against allowing it to be developed. Well, when I started working with uh, a man there who has got a head for uh, economics, said, do you understand that perhaps if we uh, back off and let this land be developed that we'll have more tax space in this community mm -hmm. to support our fire department 
and to support the other our things in our well, fix we, the streets. Well, we don't have uh, police in the township. Oh, oh you're talking about in your neighborhood, yeah. yeah. The, the but that that holds true for the city of Duluth. Precisely, as well. yeah. <laughs> so, but that was the mentality that well, we don't want more people in here. And one of them, I said to her, I said, well, what do you think the people thought about you? who settled this area to begin with, about you moving in and buying a piece of property and, and uh, putting up a home. Is that the same attitude that, that yeah. others have had that have kept development from moving forward? Well, we're now on the same page. She and I are on the same page, but it took a long time to convince these people it isn't gonna grow if you hold it tightly in your fist and you don't see the whole picture. And mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what's going on. Why they're controlling it, I can speculate, but I won't. But all, that's all what's I know been is, going on. All I know is if I'm fortunate enough to be a, a city council uh, member, along with the eight others, I look forward to working with them and, and uh, being a positive force for um, our businesses, as well as our, our families in District 1 and all over Duluth. This, again, it, there's, um, when I worked in economic development, we, we worked closely with those communities all over Minnesota and businesses um, to support them in opening up their doors or expanding. And it's good for, it's good for the city, like we talked about. Uh, tax revenue can grow. Um, it provides jobs for our families so they can um, you know, afford their homes and send their kids to college. And um, I know that I can, I can uh, uh, work with the mayor and the council um, to encourage um, that kind of development. And there's great ideas out there. We've, we've got great folks who contribute a lot to this community and um, they should be celebrated. And they should be brought in, um, the leaders outside of the city council should be brought in to the uh, exactly. decision making, at least listen to what they have to say so that we broaden our scope of thought uh, when, we're, right. when we're elected to make position, right. uh, decisions that affect everybody. And you might be uh, elected to represent the first district, but you affect all of the district yes, with the decision right. that right. you make. And mm -hmm. so we need to keep that in mind. Yep. Well now, Becky's doing her job by uh, getting out there and talking to the people and, and now you as the uh, viewers have to do your part. Election day is in a very important time. It gives you the opportunity to have a voice. Some of you may sit back and think, well, what's the point? They don't listen to me anyway, why should I bother and vote? But we still have the opportunity to vote here in America unlike so many other places. And so it's your responsibility to get out there and listen to the candidates, invite them to sit down and talk with you. So in November, mm -hmm. November 5th. 5th of November, you need to get out and vote. And thank you very much, Becky, for coming in today and talking to us. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate have it. Have a good day. Thanks. Thanks now.